Uh, I'm sure they'll have all sorts of fun. Okay, folks, this will be, we've got some real interesting stuff, but we'll go through the, uh, is it just a space? Oh, good. Please read the note well. Uh, in IDR, the one I just was in, um, you can go through all of it, make the, declarations. We're going to go through uh, the chair slides and a, bash, a bashing, then the status on the models. Then is there someone here for DC fabric model? If not, good. I, um, I don't have your slides on, on this laptop, so um, we may put you at the end if that's okay, so I can switch. Okay, then we'll do the CU separation info model and the ephemeral state and come back to the data fabric. Um, and again, I apologize for the uh, places that we've missed. Okay, we are down to, I, I2S is having, uh, uh, is in its last phases of closing out work that was in its original charter. And we hope to be completing that work and going into hiatus or closing the working group in March. So adoption that we do at this point must have some very uh, uh, strict requirements because we've got to go quickly from any adoption to uh, working group last call. So that will be true of the two drafts we're talking about today. One is the ephemeral data store and one is the informational draft. Um, and both of those have a need. Now, this is a little picture about what your chair's life has been like. Uh, both Russ and I have been a little swamped by our life outside. So thank you for helping us authors. We're sorry we're not catching up with you. 
The good news, uh, and Kent's here, with the adoption of, of NetConf and NetMod of the revised data store models and everything, IR2S can complete its task. We have to complete the ephemeral data store model and submit all models to the ISG and then go into a, a hiatus. And we hope to do this by March. Our models are uh, the topolo two topology drafts, which were handling editorial nits, the uh, rib data model, which their authors tell me they're doing the same thing. I've got a couple questions for them. I'd love to try to meet with them. Uh, Alex uh, met with me over lunch. Uh, Mark uh, has promised to meet with me along with Amit. So I think we're going to try to get that so we can send Aaliyah the gifts of the week. <laughs> it's almost holiday time. <laughs> yeah. So that was our charter. The other pieces in the charter that I'd like to remind you is that we had L2 topology, FIB, RIB, uh, and the data center fabric. Um, we'll get a discussion of the data center fabric. Since I know they've implemented that, we'll probably move that quickly to working group last call, which is why, uh, thanks, Jan, we'll go through that uh, second. But we have to go through the ephemeral data store. So there are two models that we're going to discuss here. One is an ephemeral data store, and one is a CU separation with an info model that a couple service providers, one is implemented and two are working on. And I'm just going to say this one more time. Anything we adopt now must be ready to roll and discuss shortly so that we can start adoptions and working group last calls within a month. OK, so that's, that's the chair slides. Let's see, Donald, if I can do this. Now, uh, Ro, I don't know if this is, pardon? Last item. I want to make sure I've got the right slide set, so take a look at it, and then we'll start. Um, does this look right, or did I have the older one? No, not the right one. OK, that's what I worried. Yes? Okay, that's, thank you. There we go. And I'll have to do the slide set for you. Just tell me when you want to. Well. Hello. Yeah, oh, good, <laughs> it good. works. Good. Hello, everyone. Um, here comes the new draft. Uh, here comes the draft of the information model of the BNG device with control plan and user plan separation. This is the updated version as the version 02. And my name is Guron from China Mobile, and my co-authors, um, Victor, Michael, Shu Jinghu. Um, and, and Victor is from Telefonica. Yeah. And next slide, please. Oh, it's so slow. <laughs> <laughs> I must have it done wrong. Um, the next slide is about the concept of the BNG device with control plan and user plan suppression. Um, as introduced in uh, pre in this morning in the uh, routing work group, um, the BNG device is um, is presented with a new architecture um, with the with its control plan and user plan suppression. Here for short. Um, in a traditional BNG device, there are several functional modules, such as the information management module and the routing and forwarding modules. Here, the BNG control plan um, focuses on the information management, such as the user information and the resource information. And thus, the BNG control plan can be virtualized and centralized in the uh, actual deployment. While the BNG user uh, user plan acts as a role as traditional routing and uh, forwarding. 
um, in this architecture, it um, provides significant benefits such as the session management centralization, the address allocation flexibility, and the high scalability for subscriber management capacity and many other um, significant benefits. Um, the objective of this draft is to um, present an um, information model to present the interaction uh, interface between the control plan and the user plan. Because now in the new architecture of the BNG device, there are two parts. One is the control plan and another is the user plan. There are many interaction interface between them. Um, so we want to, so the aim of this draft is to present a standard information model. Under the standard information model, we think that the interworking of different devices can be improved. Uh, such as the control plan and the user plan belonging to different vendors, they can co-work with each other. Uh, next slide, please. Let me see. Ah, hold oh, on. let me <laughs> we try skip. one more time. Yes, I skipped <laughs> many things. Uh, yeah, next slide is about the updates of our draft. Yes. Um, is that the right down? Yeah. Like, good. Since the last ITF meeting, we have several updates. The first is that we specify the information model in routing backups no form. Um, that means our information model obeys the backups uh, no uh, grammar. Uh, it makes us easier to understood, understand the information model. And the second one is we add a new section to introduce the usage of the information model. Um, and then we delete the appendix of the young model uh, according to some comments, since we think our information model is protocol independent. Um, what's more, we rewrite some test to improve the draft readability. Last but not the least, uh, we have new authors to join us and welcome Victor and Shu Junhu uh, representing the opinions of the operators. Next slide, please. Slowly, just patience. <laughs> uh, next slide is the overview of the information model. In our information model of the control plan and user plan separation BNG device, um, it is divided into two parts. Oh, <laughs> one is the control plan information model, and another is the user plan information model. The control plan information model is used by the control plan device while the user plan information model is used by the user plan. While in the control plan information model, uh, it divides into three parts. One is the user-related information model, and another is the information-related interface-related information model, and the third is about the device-related information model. Um, the user-related information model is specific to some user's information, uh, such as the user's ID, the user's IP address, and uh, the user's um, quality of service rules. While the interface-related information model contains a lot of attributes related with the service interface, while the device-related um, information model um, contains a lot of attributes related with the um, device, such as the address seg seg segment distributing to the user plan um, by the control plan. While in the user plan information model, there are two parts. One is the port resources information model, and another is the traffic statistics. In the port resource information model, it contains the information of the ports, such as the available uh, network resources. While in the traffic statistics, it has many par parameters uh, in order to report the uh, traffic information. Um, the, these uh, statistics can be uh, reported to the control plan by the user plan. Um, maybe the, this is the general overview of this model. Uh, next slide, please. Um, next, uh, next slide is about our future steps. Uh, the first is we want everyone to um, to give us more um, comments. And um, up to now, uh, we have updated this draft.
for many times. So we think the information model may be mature and maybe this draft is ready for the work group adoption. So uh, let us leave the question to our um, chairs. Uh, what do you recommend about this draft? And the last slide. <laughs> The last slide is many thanks. Yeah, many thanks. <laughs> very slowly. Hey, very slowly, <laughs> many thanks, folks. So we're going to take this one to the list, and I need to chat a little bit with the AD. It does fulfill the thing that if you actually worked on deployments, we have a, a situation we can discuss. So please watch your list after I talk to our AD. OK. Thank you. Um, question, comment. Question. Uh, yeah, so you're saying about the user plane and the, and the control plane, but where do you put the QoS? Because QoS is one of the major issues in the BMP. Yeah, we can see. I have the appendix slide. The next slide, please. Um, this is slide we present last ITF. It's the usage example of this information model. Here we can see uh, a user pub. Uh, access into the internet. And uh, the QS uh, see in the uh, QS see in the blue character, the CP, uh, the control plan, sent the tables to the UP. And the tables includes the QS rules. Here we set the, um, set the broadband bandwidth, such as the uh, six or eight. Th that is the QS. Um, okay, uh, when a subscriber subscribes into the internet, um, they will all have their bandwidth uh, requirements, such as um, Bob access the internet, he buys the bandwidth, uh, the bandwidth we give them. That is the QS. Yeah, the when Bob access, he uh, when Bob access, he um, sends the information uh, in the control plan. The control plan gets the user's information, and he sends the user's information into the user plan due to the uh, through the information model. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, this really does work very well, doesn't it? All right, let's try again. Um, so the main question I have is if there's interest in the document, and this is. As the question I have is whether this would get the same level or more review if, as a result of closing or putting on hiatus while we get the documents through the RFC editor, I to our else, if it were an RTWG. I know that you talked there as well. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. I got you, but the topic was there as well. Uh, this is off. That's the problem. Nope. Does this work? Yeah, it, it's amazing how a power switch is very helpful. Anyway, um, so the question is basically, for those who are interested in the work, would you also come to RTGWG to review the work and comment there? Or do you feel like it needs to have the smaller and rapid speed that it would require if it were an I2RS? I mean, that's, that's really the question. That is the real question. And at this point, I'm very reluctant to take things that aren't explicitly required for I2RS into the working group, even though this looks like really interesting work. And I know you have deployment experience. This isn't, it shouldn't happen. And it's just the management of which working group it should happen in. So I think um, I'll talk with Sue, but probably we should have a discussion with you and Jeff, Tansara, and Chris Bowers as well to see if we can um, migrate the work over there. Several people send me the emails, but privately, not in the work group mail list. 
So I think this draft uh, draws some attention, but they didn't show their attention in the work group mail list. Right, and I want to be clear, I'm not concerned. So it is clear that you have done work. Mm -hmm. There is deployment pieces. And I appreciate that you've gotten private feedback on it. I would encourage people to do more public feedback on the mailing list as well, because that helps provide a record of interest and the discussion and improvement. My hesitation is I don't see this being done in the next month or two. And that's the time frame that we're talking about. I think it's potentially quite interesting work, Thank you. but I think that RTGWG will have more time to discuss it. And given that there was other work related to this coming into RTGWG and being discussed there, that um, there'll be a broader context. Okay. Thank you for the suggestion. And, and we will, we should probably talk with Jeff Tensor okay. and Leah and I so we can provide a good bridge yes. on that. Because uh, I think okay. there it has shown significant interest here and in people who are willing to comment. Um, so let's see if we can try to move it in that direction with some guidance from me to Jeff. OK. Sounds thank you good. all. Thank you. And thank you for this interesting work. I mean, yep. this is really fascinating work. Um, I wish we could go forward with it here. Okay, it's appreciated. I have um, the data model. Just a minute. Let's see if I can. Uh, I'm going to do the uh, ephemeral model and come back. Jan, I do have I do have the the presentation. I'll just we'll do this in slightly different order. Yeah, it's. I just didn't put it on the memory stick, and I. Okay. Okay, this is the last piece of required work that we haven't really picked up or looked at, and that's the ephemeral data store. Um, the ephemeral data store uh, is fairly easy at this point because. It, oh, look, if I just did the space, it would have worked. Femoral data store is um, easier um, because 90% of the work has already been done in ops. The net mod revised data store has been done in ops. The net man, the uh, revised data store, net conf and rest conf additions. And we just have to have that last 5% to define a standard. There are only three things to discuss regarding this model. One, the need, whether we need an ephemeral flag. We did this so that you could have a flag in the data model that's in all the requirements. Could this be done in a combination of dynamic plus configuration? Let's look at this. If you have the dynamic data store, which I2S data stores are, and the intended, do we need to have something where we have the ephemeral flag? That's question one. Uh, I can take these one. Kent, go ahead. If Kent Watson, Juniper Networks. Um, the ephemeral flag would be to say that the module is only to be in the oh, dynamic. It could be a portion of the module. By definition, it's okay. only a portion to be. Um. If it was a portion of the module, then you might need a flag. Yep, that's why we left it in this particular model. Mm -hmm. But it would be judged. Okay, that's question one. Uh, and here's the text in the model that would <clears throat> give you the identity to do that. The second is non-sensitive data. Certain models may be sent over REST comp. Uh, over HTTP and TCP, there is a data store flag that says this, and that's again part of our requirements. I recommend, uh, just a minute, I recommend that you, it's always been recommended 
that there's a, a user flag that turns off or turns off the capability to do this. The flag in the data store that does this is just a value that says um, this data is not sensitive. Again, for a portion of the model or for the model, most likely a portion. Hi, this web server is up. And the, th the last thing that's in the current model, it's very short, it looks like the revised data for store example is a list of models, just simply in a comment. Hi, these are the ones, but it is anticipated you would then put comments. What's left out? Any flags on validation or validation by implementation? I believe my estimate when I went through all the requirements in the R2S requirements, that the revised data store provided enough information on, on specifying validation within the own. So that's all it is. It's fairly short. Um, Alex helped me figure out where I was going with it. He and I are co-authors. And um, I think we've got the thoughts and comments from people. We'd like to then go to a working group adoption fairly quickly because it's our last thing to do. Any questions, more comments? Uh, Kent again. The non-sensitive data, would that be on uh, protocol accessible nodes or uh, notifications or RPCs? It, it, it is currently um, in the requirements that we have. It is allowed to be in notifications or read-only nodes, but not write. Mm -hmm. And also, uh, something else that may have been left out is a prioritization. Client priority? Priority is part of the read combination into the IR2S, into the um, into the data model, and that is actually something that needs to be part of the implementation. Okay. So that's part of the architecture in the data store. Now, if you need that in the data store model to specify it, that would be good feedback, so we put it in the data store model. And this is Alex. Um, one, uh, also, one concern actually regarding the second item uh, is what I'm wondering is basically is this actually unique to ephemeral data store, basically the sensitive uh, information. Therefore, basically, from, from this perspective, I'm not exactly sure actually if this is the right match to put this here. I, I think everything else is good, but I think on this one, I have some, yeah, just, just some concerns in my mind as, as well. Data. Sorry? But data. Yes. Okay. What, what was that? Because, because, because we're mixing basically the, the transport, how it is accessed with the fact that it's ephemeral. So I'm not exactly sure if they are the same concern, they're separate yeah. concerns. Yeah, and I wasn't sure either because when I read the draft this morning, it, it said um, about the notification streams. And I, my comment was going to be that I think you would have to have a stream that was dedicated to non-sensitive data. Yes, you like, do. Have, you have to have a stream that's dedicated okay. to non-sensitive. So should that be more clearly specified. You might even define the, <coughs> define the stream in this draft. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So non-sensitive, just find the stream. I'll come back to the first question. The, the structure makes ephemeral fairly easy, right, Be, for a model base. It even makes it easy if you're overlaying BGP peer as ephemeral. Because if you have your BGP peer added as ephemeral, when you add the BGP to the operational piece, you're just overloading the di dynamic data store into the intended. Again, I'm tempted to leave it in until we have a few examples, just because I think it might be working within it. It's just we'll have to pay attention when we do the first BGP peer edition. And that's coming after the IDR seems to be strongly in favor of the revised data store for BGP. There'll be, there'll be a, uh, an I2S BGP uh, picture because that was one of them. The other one is the rib case, which was our original case, and that fits within a data store. So I think it's the BGP ephemeral case where we'll test this out. Uh, I anticipate that particular draft to resurface now that we've gotten the BGP stuff. Any other thoughts from people in the room on the ephemeral data store? Eric or um, okay, take a look at it. I may I think 
Alex and I will maybe make another pass on the comment on notification stream. Aaliyah, did, did we restrict the um, non-secure stuff to notification? We made it to notification and read only. So we need to put both notification and read only. This is an incredibly short draft. Um, so just take a peek at it. Okay. Give me one moment while I... Uh, is there any other questions, any other concerns about this revised, uh, this ephemeral data store? Any, I mean, this basically is fairly easy, again, because uh, of the excellent work done in, in uh, NetMount and RESTCOM. Okay, it is uh, Alex and Mai's desire that we put this to working group last call. We'll, we'll make a couple revision and then the working group last call will be fairly quickly. Okay, give me one moment while I, um, Donald, do I need to do something to eject this or just pull? <coughs> oh, drag it. Okay. It's easier to yeah, you know, let's find your window. window. I'm sorry. It's okay. Uh, we go. So we just go quick. Oh, okay, now, okay, now I'm going to pull this and put another one on. Okay. Okay, is there a... Donald, I'm afraid I lost the wind. I switched to the screen. I'm sorry. I think that's the wrong feature anyway. I just do that. Look at that. I should be able to get the... Yeah, this one. Okay. Thank you. Jan, would you like to present now? Hopefully I can help. I will have to Thank try you. to help you. Yeah. Okay. Uh, thank you. This is uh, something about our fabric-based uh, uh, management for this center network. And this slide is pre being pre uh, presented uh, several times in this group. So can you go on? Yeah, this is some recap. And uh, the concept of this design is for this center network. We want to simplify our data center uh, network management. So we divided uh, the layers into three. Uh, the lowest one is the physical layer, and the, the middle one is the fabric -like layer, which is for uh, fab network uh, orchestrator and a network layer. And uh, the up layer is for users. As you can see, there are many 
uh, users uh, slice over that uh, in their layers. So this is the general concept. Next. And uh, this is uh, what we provided in our drafts and in our uh, modules. Actually, we, are, uh, we have done some work in I2IS, which provided uh, the fabric-based topology management. As this layer, we just uh, abstracted the, the physical layer into the uh, network provider and provided uh, how the physical layer network uh, looks like. And, uh, the network provider can look at the, the whole network as uh, composed of uh, several uh, network uh, fabrics. So at the higher layer, which is the service layer, uh, we provided a, a service interface for the users to define their networks. So uh, next. So uh, the previous slides just give you a recap of this, what, what kind of work we are doing in I2IS. And this is the progress since the last IT, ITF meeting. And uh, thanks for everyone's work. We get consensus on the fabric topology layer, which is the, the second layer, which provided for the network provider to uh, manage their networks. So this is uh, adopted by the working group and uh, all the modules and uh, we remove some modules, uh, duplicated definitions between these kind of two uh, modules. And also we provide uh, an MDA structure and uh, to pass the, uh, to resolve some errors in the young validation. And currently the two modules don't have any errors. And there's some, uh, some warnings and I'm trying to fix in the next version. Yeah, that's the, the progress and updates. And the next, yeah, the next is we welcome further feedbacks and uh, to help improve these modules. And uh, we will prepare the next version with no errors and uh, no warnings. Do you think it? Yeah. Do you think at that time you'll be ready for working group last call? Yeah, I think the fabric topology model is quite uh, okay. solid. Eight. So yeah. maybe we could start working group last call mm -hmm. in a week or so. Would that work? Uh, or two weeks? Yeah. Do do. Ask me to correct all the uh, warnings before yes. that. Okay. okay. So two weeks, okay. and then we'll start working group last call. Yeah, I, I will try to uh, conform with uh, Benoit about this. Okay. Thank you. That would be good. Yeah. Any questions yeah. on this model? Okay. Any questions on anything in any of the R2S models? This will be our last uh, cycle here. Alex and I will be on the list working on the data store. Uh, Kent, thank you very much again. Uh, and uh, folks, uh, we'll give you back some of your day. Thank you again.
We're all set up for Trill. I had slides on this thing for Trill, or if you've got slides already. I also, this, this, this thing has the Trill and PDF, so it's up to you. Uh, this morning, then you can run the. Yeah, which will be very good. That's all you did to press press. We get the gear and this thing gets done at I 